to thank our uh, teacher, our dean, our resident expert uh, for his remarks this evening. Uh, and now, Mr. Speaker, I would yield myself as much time as I may consume. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, the United States is a leader in advocating for human rights and humanitarian assistance. These ideals are embodied in the desire to assist and guide others that have lost hope. At the United Nations World Summit in 2005, 191 members of the UN expressed support for the idea of a responsibility to protect. This responsibility to protect proclaims that mass atrocities that occur in one country are the concern of all countries. This echoes the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s declaration that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. With Dr. King's words in our hearts, I rise today to speak about the grave tragedies affecting individuals from Darfur and the temporary protective status, better known as TPS, for indiv individuals from Liberia and Haiti. I began with the humanitarian emergency that is taking place in Darfur. The history of the situation in the Darfur region of Sudan is long and complicated. Sudan has been embroiled in a civil war for decades. The conflict took a turn for the worse in 2003 when the Sudanese government mobilized militias known as Janjaweed to attack opposition groups. The militia, has been brutal, the militia has brutalized the people of Darfur with murder, rape, torture, and pillage. They have burned down entire villages, forcing people to flee their homes and their livelihoods. Entire portions of the region are now ruled by roving bands of armed gunmen. Since 2003, 300,000 Darfuris have died as a result of the conflict and approximately 2.7 million have been forced from their homes. The conflict in Darfur is also having a destabilizing effect on its western neighbor, Chad. Nearly 200,000 refugees from Sudan have joined the 90,000 persons displaced by the civil war in Chad. To further complicate matters, both Chad and Sudan have accused each other of supporting rebellions in their countries. Last week, however, the situation in Darfur took a grave turn for the worse. Sudan's president, Omar al-Bashir, expelled 13 non-governmental organizations or NGOs and 6,500 aid workers from the country. This was in direct retaliation for Bashir's indictment on war crimes and crimes against humanity by the International Criminal Court, better known as the ICC, on March 4, 2009. Bashir's unsubstantiated accusation that the NGOs were cooperating with the ICC's investigation only heightens the urgency and necessity for an international response. The civilian population is composed of two million people who are spread out among 200 refugee camps in the Darfur and in 12 refugee camps in eastern Chad. The UN estimates that 40 percent of Darfur's de Darfuris depend on outside assistance for their survival. This expulsion of humanitarian groups such as Oxfam and Doctors Without Borders will adversely affect millions of civilians who rely on NGOs for their most basic food and medical needs. Who will continue to provide these urgent services, Mr. Speaker? The Sudanese government has clearly demonstrated that it is unwilling or unable to assist its citizens throughout this very conflict. The expulsion of the NGOs is only the most recent act that endangers millions of lives. This is why the international community must unite and forcefully declare that Sudan's government not hold its citizens hostage. Last week, I and nearly 80 members of this Congress sent letters to the Secretary General of the League of Arab States, the Chairman of the African Union, and the President of China, urging them to insist that the government of Sudan allow humanitarian organizations to re-enter the country President Bashir must separate the ICC's actions from the charitable efforts of relief groups. The expulsion violates internal, international humanitarian law and damages efforts to resolve the conflict. 
Without the NGOs, more than one million Darfuris will be left vulnerable to disease and starvation. These are civilians, Mr. Speaker. They are caught in the crosshairs of a conflict they did not begin, and they have no power to end. By sacrificing his people for political gain, President Bashir has shown a callous disregard for human life that the international community cannot ignore. President Bashir must reverse the expulsion order and allow NGOs back into Sudan. The people of Darfur have suffered enough. To compound their anguish at this critical time is unconscionable. I applaud President Obama's appointment of a special envoy to Sudan. President Obama named retired Air Force General Scott Gratian last week as his special envoy to Sudan, choosing a close advisor with broad experience in the region. The President has indicated that the conflict in Darfur is a priority for his administration. The CBC is encouraged by the administration's stance, and we look forward to working with the President and the Special Envoy, Gratian. At this time, Mr. Speaker, I would like to yield to my colleague from the state of Texas, the gentlewoman from the state of Texas, Ms. Sheila Jackson Lee.